Imagine a world where the most powerful technology isn't locked away in a distant cloud server, but sits snugly in your pocket. Maybe it'll turn out that in an age where we're told everything has to be online, the future of AI might be going offline. A lot of people don't realize how much computing power is actually needed to run good AI models. And it's mind blowing if you stop and think about it, if you dig into this at all, that you can run local, very capable models on your iPhone. And this is something that's been intriguing me for a long time. I've just run into a new app. I've been testing several called Apollo, which is kind of like having your own AI sidekick, but instead of needing Wi-Fi or data, it just works on your iPhone. So as the creator of Apollo is demonstrating here, you can run a very capable llama model locally on your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac, all while keeping your data private. This is a big deal because you don't have to trust the big tech companies every time you want to use AI. It has implications for things like when an earthquake hits and all the services go out to be able to have AI that you can ping that's very capable right in your pocket, regardless of if the internet and power are out, then you're gonna be very prepared. So I think what's really interesting about this, and this is a very sleek, well done app, by the way, is that it helps you realize the true power of the digital age isn't just about connectivity, but it's also about autonomy and privacy. And by bringing these AI capabilities to your device, Apollo is not just making AI more accessible, but it's democratizing technology, allowing you to take back some control from the cloud. Now I've tried some alternatives, like I mentioned, like private LLM, and I found it to be okay. I really like the implementation here of Apollo, probably like a hundred times better. Uh, like I said, it's super sleek and well done, but you have more control over like the steering, the actual meta prompt that the information hits before it actually gets fed to whatever model that you're ending up using. So congratulations to Aaron for this, but I think the overall mood as I'm seeing people interact with this is really excitement. They're curious, you know, a lot of people haven't tried this yet, um, but other people who have, they're just super excited to run a high level AI locally. So I've been running it on the iPhone 16 Pro here, not the Pro Max, just the Pro. And I've been really blown away by how fast the time to first token is like the you know time it takes for your text to actually appear. It's pretty speedy. The quality of the answers has been pretty good. Um, in the past for local stuff, I've been I've been messing around with all the AI programs that are available, right? Whether paid or free or local or uh, open source or whatever. So um, for me, I'm used to the quality of you know ChatGPT's latest um, or Claude 3.5 Sonnet or even like a Llama 405B, right? Which is a much bigger model than you can run here um, with Apollo because the iPhone just can't take it. But I'm actually very happy with the output and not having to necessarily be dependent on uh, an internet connection or some tech company that's like a middleman. Really like that there's a conversational mode as well. You can even switch out the voices and stuff. So it's very capable. Now, one suggestion for Aaron uh, is that he could have game mode turn on automatically when this launches, I've seen other uh, options that do that. And I think that would help with the resource constraints. I've seen, you know, basically everyone's excited about this, but the negative feedback has been, well, what about, uh, you know, the system requirements? Is it gonna drain your battery? Um, is it gonna be a drag on the overall iPhone? So I think turning on game mode would be good for performance, but also I don't view this as something, like the back of my iPhone doesn't heat up the same way that it does with private LLM quite as fast or as bad. So I think it's pretty optimized already. So there's the practical angle, right? It's private. If you need to process sensitive data without sending it to external servers, you can do that. There's the offline productivity angle, right? It's ideal for tasks like writing, coding, or translating where the internet connection either isn't available or you just don't want to have it connected up. You know, there's something about being in a focused state where you get rid of all distractions. And some people I know can go as far as trying to disconnect from the internet altogether. And this is cool to still have this available if that's you and you're like in super productivity, super focus mode, that deep work mode. If you've ever wished that you could unleash your productivity without the internet, Apollo is gonna be helpful. But also my course, Learning to Be Productive, can help you make your productivity goals as smart and efficient as Apollo on your iPhone. So you can master your productivity your way online or offline. It's 50% off right now using the coupon down in the description. But it's also interesting to think about the implications just for personal data rights and autonomy. Something like Apollo, and actually, in fact, Apollo, represents sovereignty over your digital space in a way that you haven't really been able to experience a lot of people, especially the mainstream tech users, for a very long time. And it's sort of like a fortress where you can kind of control what goes in 
and what comes out. And I don't mean that in a holistic way because the model is the model. It was trained on certain data or whatever. And to my knowledge, this isn't like an uncensored uh, version of Llama that you can load in here. You can't just load any model, right? There's a menu of things that you can choose, but this is very capable. And uh, I like the idea behind it of having more sovereignty, me making more choices over the tech in my life and how it, it interacts with me and vice versa versus just big tech companies, you know, pulling all the levers, pushing all the buttons behind the scenes and me just being stuck using whatever they feel like giving me. On that note, there was a survey by Privacy International that said 65% of users are unaware that there's potential for truly private AI interactions like this. So here you go. Consider yourself more aware. It costs like six bucks or something to download. Well worth it uh, from my perspective. And you should just do a simple search. Um, it's Apollo Local AI. And I think you're going to be delighted. Let me know if this is something you're interested in. Are you going to check it out and use it? And why or why not?